Hello, my dear friends. Welcome again to another episode of our Praying with the Sun. I'm sorry, last yesterday that we weren't able to have our Praying with the Sun because of a heavy rain here in my location and the recording is bad. So I did not anymore publish the recorded video, did not post it on YouTube because it's very noisy. But, uh, Hopefully, you are still with us. And for those who are joining now, thank you very much for going online for tonight. And together, we once again pray that uh, the good Lord will protect us from COVID-19. And uh, we, will, we also pray that our beloved, our friends, and our loved ones will be also spared from the you know the dangers of this sickness that is uh, there that, 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 that is threatening us no? for this particular day we will be praying Psalm number 38 so I hope that you have your Bibles ready and we will pray Psalm number 38. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May Jesus, who is the light of the world, light our path and bring us to righteousness. Amen. So Psalm number 38. Lord, Punish me no more in your anger. In your wrath, do not chastise me. Your arrows have sunk deep in me. Your hand has come down upon me. My flesh is afflicted because of your anger. My frame aches because of my sin. My iniquities overwhelm me, a burden beyond my strength. Foul and festering, are my sores because of my fooling? I am stooped and deeply bowed. All day I go about mourning. My loins burn with fever. My flesh is afflicted. I am numbed and utterly crushed. I wail with anguish of heart. My Lord, my deepest yearning is before you. My groaning is not hidden from you. My heart shudders, my strength forsakes me. The very light of my eyes has failed. Friends and companions shun my pain. My neighbors stand far off. Those who seek my life lay snares for me. They seek my misfortune. They speak of ruin. They plot treachery all day. But I am like the de deaf hearing nothing, like the dumb saying nothing, like someone who does not hear, who has no answer ready. Lord, I wait for you. O Lord, my God, answer me. For I fear they will gloat, exult over me if I stumble. I am very near to falling. My pain is with me always. I acknowledge my guilt and grieve over my sin. But many are my foes without cause, a multitude of enemies without reason, repaying me for evil, repaying me evil for good, harassing me for pursuing good. Forsake me not, O Lord, my God, be not for me. Quick, come quickly to help me, my Lord, in my salvation. Lord God, we acknowledge that you are our salvation, you are our strength, you are our guide. Without you, Lord, we will fall into despair. We will be paralyzed by anger and fear, and we will lose our hope. We acknowledge that we are sinners. May you forgive us of our transgressions and may you bring us to salvation. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. So my dear friends, welcome again to another episode of our Praying with the Psalm. And this is a beautiful psalm for us to reflect on. And uh, one of the main things that I can say about the psalm is that it it tells us about the repentance of the of a sinner. He is trying to ask the Lord for forgiveness because he recognizes that he has done evil and he is trying to pray for mercy from God because God knows that inside his heart in the innermost uh, core of his being he is repentant and he is uh, suffering a lot and so he has no other recourse but to God and I think that is also something that uh, we come to understand during this time of the pandemic when we are afflicted by so much trouble and that is we go to God as our only hope and our only strength and uh, we have come to realize that the uncertainties and the fragility of life is in fact always with us and uh, our hope is in the Lord you know sometimes uh, there's a tendency for us to just try to give up no uh, when we become so tired of trying to avoid the, the virus but trying to hide ourselves is also of no use because there are well for the, especially for those of us who cannot really or who don't have really the luxury of uh, hiding in our seclusion or secluded villas for example or houses or rest rest houses on the mountain tops and uh, we are really forced to work or to do transactions or do business and, uh, and as much as we can, we are trying to protect ourselves by wearing masks, face masks, face shield, by uh, observing social distancing, by uh, staying outdoors more than indoors, by uh, taking our vitamins, our medicines and so on and so forth we, we are doing everything that we are trying to do but there are still so much uncertainties like for example uh, how about the people that surrounds you those the, your housekeepers for example or your drivers well they have their lives of their own and uh, sometimes they have to go out or go home to their families so how can you be sure that they are really observing all those protocols and they are safe unless you test them, unless you test all your workers and every time they enter into your house. And which is of course very impractical to do. So I believe that we Filipinos, as well as especially here in, in the city, when I go out, because they have to say mass, for example, or or to conduct some transactions. You can see that people are already on the streets. I mean, of course, there are there are few private uh, public vehicles. It's reduced in number, but the volume of the cars, for example, and the people conducting their business. It's really getting back almost to normal. And uh, sometimes, just to avoid, uh, to lower the risk, for example, if I go to a particular establishment, like you want to have something fixed, for example, for example, my, my uh, printer got uh, some problems. So we have to go early and make sure that at the very least we enter the repair shop 
first thing in the morning when it opens. Or if, for example, you go to the bank, uh, we make sure that at least when the bank opens, uh, we, are, we are there so that only very few people has entered the bank and you can encounter also less people. But after all is said and done, what can we really, can, is, there, is there a certainty in all this? No, there's none. So even if how much you try to take care of yourself and, your, and, your, and others, we will never know. And that is precisely from that uncertainty that we rely on God. Only in God. Well, of course, it makes sense only for those who have faith. And for those who don't have faith, I'm talking nonsense. But uh, I presume that everybody who is watching my video is a people or a, is a person of faith. Because if you don't believe in God, the first three seconds you, <laughs> you shut this video down. But yes, for us who have faith, that's the only recourse that we have. Our only and only certainty, our only certain truth, the certainty that we can have is that we have a God who knows what's the best for us. And here in the Psalmi, the Psalmist is putting to the Lord, in front of the Lord, his condition, the festering sores that he has, the aches of his body, the, the fire in his lo loins, and so many, f the, the dimming eyesight, the heart that is uh, palpitating. <laughs> he is a person who is really in a very bad situation, and so he, he goes to God, and he presents this dilemma, these problems, these difficulties to the Lord. And I believe it is also the same, the same is true to us. We have to bring to God our problems and our difficulties. We bring to God our frailties and our uncertainties in life so that the Lord can can give us assurance of course assurance in the sense na, uh, God is good and though even though we do not know his mind we believe that he is powerful okay and the last part the last uh, point that I would like to reflect on and meditate with this psalm is this the verse 16 and 17 Lord, I wait for you. O Lord, my God, answer me. For I fear they will gloat, exult over me if I stumble. You see? Even though the man is, so, is in such a dire state, a very difficult state, shame is still a very important factor in his prayer. He said, Lord, if you will not save me, I will be put to shame. <laughs> And uh, of course, this is a this is a societal uh, norm during those uh, during those time. Uh, so it's uh, more of a they would prefer death over shame, as they say. No, and nowadays uh, we find that people are shameless. <laughs> The, wala na palabra di honor. No more palabra di honor. Before, you can just uh, rely on the word of a person as your surety. Now? No. No more. And we can see that in our, in our country today, with what is happening <laughs> almost everywhere, we are becoming shameless the word of honor is really gone. No more. And you know what I mean. Uh, even they said that among the thieves, there is a word of honor among the even among the thieves. There's word of honor even among the thieves. But nowadays, I am not sure anymore if who is more honorable. <laughs> Anyway, that's a shame over all other aspects of life in the ancient culture. 
And that is not only for the person, it also involves God. Why? Because the, the prayer, although it says that, Lord, you have to listen to me because I fear I will stumble and, my, and, the, and they will exalt over me. What is the implication of this? The implication of this is that God is, has a part in this. He has a, he has a ano tawag dyan? Meron siyang, I forgot, but God has a, uh, something like he has a, well, as I said, it's a part, God has a part here, but shall we say, he is involved here. God is involved here. How is God involved here? He is involved here because the worshiper represents, whatever happens to the worshiper, reflects on the power of the God that he worships. So take note that the enemies of the person praying here must have been a non-Israelite or someone who doesn't worship the God of Israel. So, in a battle between two persons or in a, uh, in a difficulties between two persons, the person is not only representing himself, but he is also representing the power of his or her God. So if bad things happen to a worshiper of a particular God, it simply shows that this God is power, powerless compared to the other God. And so what the psalmist is trying to say here, Lord, you have to vindicate me. You have to save me because your name is also on, at risk here. It is online here. Uh, if you won't save me, it will show to the others that you are a God who is not as powerful as we believe you to be. So, God has a stake here. That's the word. He has a stake here. And because He has a stake here, He has to act. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, and I think this is true also. For example, uh, for those of who are atheists or agnostics, more or less the atheists and the communists and the leftists, they would always say that Christianity failed. Why is it that Christianity failed? Precisely because of what they can see among the believers. That the believers of Christ are, well, they are also unjust, they are also corrupt, they are also evil. And for 2,000 years, they would claim that nothing happened, nothing changed. The actors might have changed, but the problem remains the same. There is still poverty, there is still corruption, there is injustice, and so many other things. And so, they would claim that Christianity failed. Or maybe even Christ failed. Yeah. So, that's another, that's another important uh, thought that we have to... Uh, realize in the understanding of this particular psalm that God is at stake here. God is at, has a stake here. And that is whatever happens to the believers is reflective of God. But of course, we know that, that there is also fallacy in the thinking. But more or less, we can see here how the psalmist think and how he prayed. So let us also pray and that the good Lord will bless and protect us. Father, your name is holy. May you grant us our prayers. May you protect us at all times. And may you show your power over the difficulties we are undergoing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much.